Hari Bol Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances at your lotus feet, Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much for joining, Maharaj. Uh, will we have introduction today by Tiffany Mataji, or should we go ahead straight with Mahajar Srimad Bhagavatam class? Just continue get... with the Bhagavatam. There's no need for any. We've been doing that every week anyway. Thank you very much. Once again, I welcome His Grace, His Holiness Chandra Moli Maharaj Swamiji at Bhakti Sangha Conference, uh, Japa Conference call. Once again, Prab Maharaj, my Dandavat Pranam at your lotus feet. Maharaj will continue to enlighten us on the Srimad Bhagavatam. Today we are reciting from um, Canto 6, Chapter 6, and verse number 16. Whenever you're ready, Maharaj, you may take the call over Hare Krishna. Canto, Canto 5. Oh, Canto 5. Yes, Maharaj, you're right. Thanks for I stand correct. Hare Krishna. Om Vigyan Timidam Dasya Gana Jana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Vinga Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pustaya Bhutalai Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Dinamai <clears throat> Namaste, Saraswati Deve. Gauravani Pacharini Nivrishisa Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine. Panchakalpa Tarubhishma Eva Chapatitanam Pavane Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namaho Namaha. <clears throat> Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasudhi Gaur, Vakta Vrinda, Hare Krishna, <coughs> Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. <coughs> so these verses that are written in prose, we, in our temples, when we come across them, we don't chant them. <coughs> We chant the word for word generally. <clears throat> so what we can do is just uh, go right to the translation. <coughs> uh, translation, this is from Srimad Bhagavatam, 5, Canto 6, chapter, verse number 16. <clears throat> Sukadev Goswami continued. <coughs> Excuse me, I think <coughs> I seem to have lost my voice here for a minute. <coughs> I'll be right back. Sukadev Goswami continued, Lord Rishabdev is the master of all Vedic knowledge. Human beings, demigods, cows, and brahmanas have already explained his pure transcendental activities, which will vanquish the sinful activities of all the living entities. This narration of Lord Rishabdev's pastimes is the reservoir of all auspicious things. Whoever attentively hears or speaks of them following in the footsteps of the Acharyas will certainly attain unalloyed devotional service at the lotus feet of Lord Vasudev, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Srila <coughs> Prabhupada's purport. <clears throat> hmm. The teachings of Lord Rishabdev are for 
are for the people of all yugas, Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, the Kora Yuga, and especially Kali Yuga. <laughs> These instructions are so powerful that even in this age of Kali, one can attain perfection simply by explaining the instructions, following in the footsteps of the Acharyas or listening to the instructions with great attention. If one does so, one can attain the platform of pure devotional service to Lord Vasudev. The pastimes of the Supreme Personality of God and his devotees are recorded in Srimad Bhagavatam, so that those who recite these pastimes and listen to them will become purified. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. As a matter of principle, devotees should read, speak, and hear Srimad Bhagavatam persistently, 24 hours daily, if possible. That is the recommendation of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, or, re, I'm sorry, that is the recommendation of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Kirtaniya Sadanahi. One should either chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra or read Srimad Bhagavatam and thereby try to understand the characteristics and instructions of the Supreme Lord who appeared as Lord Rishabdev, Lord Kapila, and Lord Krishna. In this way, one becomes fully aware of the transcendental nature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as stated in Bhagavad Gita. One who knows the transcendental nature of the Lord's birth and activities attains liberation from material bondage and returns back to Godhead. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gnajana Salakaya Chakso Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurubhena Vaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Itinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gorvani Pacharine Nirvase Sasunyavari Vastyat Yade Satarine Panchakalpa Thirubas Chakri Pasindave Bajap Titanam Pavane Bio Vaishnave Bio Namaho Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitana Prabhunatanda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivansari Gaur Bhakta Vrindam Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So this verse has a category that is a very much part of the Srimad Bhagavatam, and that category is called Falastuti. Falastuti means the benefit or the fruit of the results of hearing the uh, indicated pastime. <laughs> so here, however, now in this particular follow stuti, there is some considerations. What is that? And one should tentatively hear or speak what they have heard without changing anything without adding anything, without trying to become a <clears throat> unique acharya by making all kinds of fancy presentations. One should simply repeat according to one's level of realization. And this will certainly, one can attain what is unalloyed, it's called anand, ananda bhakti, anangya bhakti, Unalloyed devotional service at the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord Vasudev. So this, and Prabhupada gets right to the point that there are two principles being mentioned or two activities. And what does he say about these activities? Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. So Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya means Always. <laughs> Nityam, eternal Bhagavata, refers to the activities. And to glorify the activities is Seva. Sevaya, 
Bhagavata Sevaya, to constantly hear or chant the, the name, fame, form, pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Here it mentions in the, par in the translation, it mentions uh, the cows, the demigods. So this particular narration, no, no, I'm sorry, not in the translation, but in the very beginning of the, no, actually, no, it says knowledge, human beings, demigods, cows, and Brahmins. Lord Rishabdev is the master of all of these. So these are the things that were covered in the narration of Lord Rishabdev. Now, Lord Rishabdev is actually speaking very elevated philosophical teachings about these different categories mentioned here. Not simple principles of knowledge, but actually developed realization of this knowledge. Therefore, his teachings are considered to be the more elevated teachings throughout the Bhagavatam in regards to the philosophical content. Now, this is interesting here. And Prabhupada gets right to the point to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. And he says, if you can do it 24 hours a day, that is recommended. <laughs> Kirtaniya Sadarahi. Of course, that's the last line of the verse spoken by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in regards to chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. But you see here, there is what is called Abhinna. Abhinna means non different. Prabhupada says one should either chant Hare Krishna Maha Mantra or read Srimad Bhagavatam. Why are they considered almost the same, practically the same? It's because it's about glorifying the Lord in the most direct and pure way as given by the Acharyas. Srimad Bhagavatam is the Amalam Puranam. It doesn't can include any other aspect of devotional principles which are less than pure devotion. It only gives pure devotion. And it doesn't even consider artha, kama, dhamma, and even moksha, which is an elevated form of an activity that can be performed by the people within this age of Kali to desire liberation. But that this hearing and chanting the glories of Srimad Bhagavatam is even, even beyond moksha. It is on the pure transcendental platform because it glorifies the name, fame, form, qualities, pastimes, paraphernalia of this Supreme Personality of Godhead. And then Prabhupada includes the Maha Mantra here, <laughs> which we all hear as being the uh, the direct means for self-realization in this age. Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Eva Kevalam, Kalo Nasteva, 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 Atikatir Anyata. So what you're seeing here, or what you're being placed with, is the principle of Achintya, Beta Beta Tattva. Or Beta Beta Tattva might even be better. Beta Beta, Beta Abeda means uh, one and different, and knowledge, therefore, it's simultaneously one and different. So there's no difference between pure hearing and chanting of the Srimad Bhagavatam and pure chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. There's no difference. It's absolute. <laughs> we have a tendency to see a distinction, but actually they're both on the, the pure transcendental pastime, pastime, because out of all of the knowledge given about the absolute nature of the Supreme Lord, one cannot find a more complete understanding and pure understanding than Sri Mad Bhagavatam. It's the best of all scriptures. Hmm. So this is this is the process. Sometimes we find, and this happens to those who have the position of uh, 
and being approached by others for knowledge or for shelter or for whatever, even for helping to sort out problems, we find here is the answer that uh, devotees have problems. Everyone has problems. <laughs> the world is problematic. Just the world itself is a problem because it is meant to uh, deter our attention away from our real goal of life. So life in the world, the material world means to face problems. But here's a way to get rid of all problems completely. <laughs> And this, this is an absolute statement. It's not a relative statement. It's not like some problems will go away. All problems will go away completely. When one absorbs themselves in hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. Satam prasangam mambabiriya sambido bhavanti ritkarna rasayana kata. This hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord is like nectar for the ear and for the heart. Bhakti riti anukramishyati. Bhakti starts there and culminates at the same place, hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. So the devotees, they complain about so many things. This is not right. This is not right. This is wrong. I have this problem. Your problem is you're not hearing and chanting. That's the problem. You, you created these other problems because you're not hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. This is, this is a fact. If you hear and chant the glories of the Lord regularly, and as Prabhupada said here, 24 hours a day, if you can do that, then you're completely on the transcendental platform, you're feeling transcendental happiness, and you are no longer affected by anything in this material world. But we won't do that, even though we know the formula, we even know, we know the solution to all problems. We either won't do it or we can't do it. <laughs> we say we can't do it because we have so many other things that we want to do. And there's so many within the category of want or mark, but there may also be things that we need to do. And that is understandable. We need to take sufficient care of the material body to keep it so we can engage in these activities. But generally, we don't hear and chant the glories of the Lord enough. And that is our problem. <laughs> that is our problem. And I'll say it continuously. That is our problem. If we were just able to understand how powerful and how effective and how direct and how much mercy is available, by hearing Bhagavatam, by reading Bhagavatam, and by speaking Bhagavatam whenever the opportunity comes, then uh, there would be no problems. Because this, this is purifying and at the same time elevating. Purifies our consciousness, elevates, because problems exist on the material level. On the spiritual level, there are no problems. They exist on the material. So when we when we go above the problems, the problems disappear. Just like when they say, how do you, if you're hungry, that's a problem. So you eat, and as you're eating, and you continually eat, your hunger is being satisfied. So you don't have to think, well, I'm hungry, what do I do? No, the problem, the thing is you eat. <laughs> and that satisfies your hunger, it also gives you pleasure, and you get nourishment at the same time. So three things come with eating. So same thing. Three things come with hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. We get a realization of the Lord. We get free from material suffering. And we, 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 uh, we, we achieve satisfaction. And we transcendental satisfaction. So all this is there through the strict and very regular process of hearing and chanting. I just wanted to, maybe I'll just give you a little. Yesterday I was, uh, I had just finished a, a four day series of programs uh, starting on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. So yesterday 
I was a little bit behind in a lot of work. And I was thinking, well, I should dive into that. But then I thought, you know, I haven't read also in, in the most of these days. So I'm just going to read. <laughs> so I just pushed everything aside and I read for maybe three hours, just reading. And uh, when I was done, I was feeling energetic. I was feeling like, yeah, the things I had to do were still there, but they seem to be more approachable now. And more, not more approachable in the sense that I didn't mind going back and doing these things before it seemed like, oh, I got to get this work done. But just by hearing, reading, and it changes your whole consciousness and your perspective on, on life also alters in a, such a way as that whatever challenges or problems you may appear, don't appear to be a problem anymore. They just appear to be part of the routine that we have to encounter, that's all. So this hearing and chanting has great effect to push back the material energy and especially Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the Amalam Puranam, 18,000 verses, all dealing with pure devotional service, glorifying the name, fame, form, pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Uh, Srimad Bhagavatam is uh, the best of all transcendental literature because it, it doesn't include anything else. You'll find uh, many religious scriptures that have other principles that you can receive some material benefit by worshiping your Lord. You can be nicely materially situated. You can uh, fulfill your material desires. You may also, you know, find yourself, they, they also promise you that, you know, you can also attain wealth, position, power, peace of mind. But Bhagavatam says, Dharma projito kaitavo paramar nimatsaranam satam. Dharma, religion, projito, kicks out kaitavo, cheating forms of religion. Dharma, Bhagavatam, removes any kind of cheating form of religion which promises material benefits from, from that and gets right to the answers, which is the nature of the soul. Because when the soul connects with pure transcendental knowledge, it becomes enlivened. And that's what's that's mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita. It becomes enlivened by that knowledge. And therefore, one automatically feels happy. Srinvata Svakata Krishna, Purnya Shravana Kirtanaha, Viridhyanto Sto Abhadrani, Vidhyanoti Husuhit Satam. That the Lord cleanses the heart of a devotee who hears and regularly hears and chants his glories and pastimes. Especially, particularly, this verse refers to Srimad Bhagavatam. The next, the next verse is Nasta Prayeshu Abhadrishin, Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya, Bhagavati Uttama Sloke, Bhaktir Bhavati Nice to Ki. These are verses 1, 7, 1 to 17 and 1 to 18 in the uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. So this is, uh, this is the power. You can go to those verses if you like. 1, 2, 17. <clears throat> this is 1, 1. You, you have to go to 1, 2. <laughs> 17. These are very Srimbata, Svakata, Krishna, yeah. A very powerful verse. In fact, 17 and 18, Srila Prabhupada has said, these two verses we should read every day. So we'll read the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, who is Paramatma Supersoul in everyone's heart, 
And the benefactor of the truthful devotee cleanses desire for material enjoyment from the heart of a devotee who has developed the urge to hear his messages, which are themselves virtuous when properly heard and chanted. That pretty much patterns the same verse that we have been reading. And Prabhupada's purport is quite interesting. Well, we can go right, go to the, see here again, messages of the personality of Godhead are non-different from the Lord himself. So there's no fixed time. One can chant the holy name or hear the glories of the Lord at any time, anywhere. And one develops a taste for hearing the holy sound. It's done through the medium of service to the pure devotee. So these are the, um, and then the next verse, Nasta Prayeshu Abhidreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhagavati Nice to Ki. That verse is very powerful. By regular attendance in classes on Bhagavatam, by rendering service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed in loving service unto the personality of Godhead who is praised with transcendental songs, is established as an irrevocable fact. And Prabhupada gets right to the point. Here is the remedy for eliminating all auspicious, inauspicious things within the heart, which are considered obstacles on the path. The, the remedy is the Bhagavats, Bhagavatas. And two kinds of Bhagavata, the Bhagavatam devotee and the Bhagavatam scripture. Both, either them or both are good enough to eliminate the obstacles. Because Bhagavatam is an incarnation of Krishna himself. Go to um, Canto 1, Chapter 3, Verse Number 43. 1, 343. Krishna Swadharma Pagadito Dharma Janari Bi Saha Kalo Nasta Drishame Sampurna Karna Duno Tita. In that verse translation, the Bhagavatam Puran is brilliant as, as the sun. It has arisen just after the departure of Lord Krishna from his own abode. Accompanied by religion, knowledge, etc., persons who have lost their vision due to the dense darkness of the ignorance age of Kali shall get light from this Purana. So this verse illustrates that after Krishna left the planet, he left himself in the form of Srimad Bhagavatam. Therefore, the incarnation of the Lord, known as Vyasadeva, came to present that knowledge in a very direct way. And this is the Bhagavatam. So if we regularly hear, chant, remember, and even speak, these uh, the narrations from Bhagavatam and then our path, then our path to devotional service is clear. It's wide open. We don't need a bunch of formulas to, you know. Nowadays, people say, "Well, we have to go for this person to get this kind of help." They have this book that helps you have this knowledge. They have, it's like uh, somehow or other we've taken on all these other so-called remedies. <laughs> which are not really remedies themselves, they're just deviations. Here is the, here's the means for getting rid of all problems and at the same time coming to the pure spiritual platform. Here enchant the glories of the Lord. And the glories of the Lord are vast, not only in Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, and other supplementary Vedic literatures, which which focus on the uh, principles of glorifying the Supreme Lord, all of these scriptures are all full. <laughs> we can't exhaust them. What to speak of exhausting Srimad Bhagavatam? Prabhupada was on a morning walk with one German professor, Professor Durkheim. And then Prabhupada was talking to him. Then Professor Durkheim was very respectable to Srila Prabhupada and also very knowledgeable. And so it was a nice conversation, both qualified people speaking. And then Prabhupada turned his attention to Srimad Bhagavatam. 
And he, he said, well, there's 18,000 verses in Srimad Bhagavatam, and it takes one month to understand each verse. And then he turned to his disciples who were also present. And he said, well, how long is that? So 18,000 verses times one month comes to 1,500 years. <laughs> so Srila Prabhupada in a very cute way said, yes, you have enough to read. <laughs> You have enough, just as Bhagavatam alone. In fact, if we center our life around three things, there's one that's not included here, but it's automatically, well, and, one, and that is devotion, that is service to the Vaishnavas. So if we chant the holy names, read in here Srimad Bhagavatam, and serve the Vaishnavas, and then there is no, you are, you, it's just a matter of time before you actually reach perfection in devotional service. So the process is, is simple, it's direct, it's powerful, it's profound, it needs nothing else, but it just needs our enthusiasm because without our enthusiasm, we uh, remain enthusiastic for so many other things which are just diverting our attention away from our real uh, goal in life like that. And these pastimes are so nice when you hear this, the, these different stories of the Supreme Lord. And it's not like you read them once and then everything is there and then you know them. No, you read them and every time you read them, you actually derive much more not just a little more. In fact, the, the uh, experience is, and this is by all devotees, it's like each time you read it, you actually experience, I am reading this for the first time. Although you haven't, you've read it before, it appears in that way because it's always revealing more and more transcendental knowledge. So this, uh, this process is very direct. And we have uh, Krishna appears and somebody forms of himself, but then we get right to the essence of Krishna's, what we say, supreme nature, and that is his, his nature in, in Sri Vrindavan Dham, which makes up the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, which is 90 chapters. There are 90 chapters in Srimad Bhagavatam in the 10th canto. I, don't, I think there's only the, the second largest uh, canto, uh, second largest uh, 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 canto is the fourth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. And that only has about 30 some chapters. I think the most in any of the cantos is like 33, sometimes 35 chapters. The Srimad Bhagavatam, I mean, Kent Canto has 90 chapters, all centered around Krishna and Sri Vrindavan Dham. And that's the essence of the teachings, or that's the culmination of all the teachings, is to hear and chant the glories of Krishna and Sri Vrindavan Bhagavatam, which are the uh, which is the sweet nature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Everything is there in his Madhurya mood or his, his, his mood as sweetness. And in Vrindavan, he is the sweetest of the sweet. And so no one should complain, well, you know, what am I going to do? <laughs> We complain, what am I going to do? There's so much you can do. In fact, we have, we don't even have enough time to do what we should be doing. <laughs> so this is, uh, this verse really gets right to the point. Here in chant the glories of the Lord, and Prabhupada says, 24 hours a day, if possible. <laughs> that means we might have to take a break to take prasadam and do a few other little things that it might be required. But my observation from my own experience, and I also see it, 
is that we don't spend enough time hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. We are more inclined to do things, to be active, and that's good also. But if we don't balance it out with sufficient hearing and chanting, we will start to feel less enthusiastic in the day-to-day -day responsibilities we have. So not only does it purify the heart and elevate us to the platform of pure spiritual activity, but it also solves all material problems. <laughs> in other words, it gives direction in all points of life. And that is the mercy of this. These two features, Srimad Bhagavatam and chanting the holy name, are the two most powerful forms of spiritual practice. Add to that, chant, add to that uh, serving the Vaishnavas. Like that, you have the complete package. <laughs> But if you're hearing and chanting the Bhagavatam and you're chanting, you're going to automatically serve devotees. It just, it comes automatically. The inspiration that you receive from these causes you to want to serve the devotees. Okay, so we'll stop there. Mm -hmm. Haribol Maharaj. Thank you so much for your nectarian class. And I cannot thank you enough for consistently re-emphasizing the importance of hearing and listening Bhagavatam. I mean, we join every day. We, we think that we are listening and hearing yet again. Every time, as you said, it appears to be new. I, please bless all of us on Bhakti Sangha Japa conference call that we can continue to come here, continue to listen, and continue to really apply it. As you said, we are all, always too much active, trying to do too many things, but we are missing out on the essence. Your blessings are of prime importance, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Um, devotees, if you have any questions, you may go ahead now. You, you may either raise your hand or you may unmute yourself if there are any questions. Everybody has become sublime with your wonderful nectarian class, Maharaj. I hope I didn't intimidate anybody. <laughs> no, no, no. You're actually, uh, uh, you know, inspiring our, to have a discerning mind. Dear Govinda Prabhuji, would you like to pose a question to Maharaj? I just want to offer my obeisances and request his blessings. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Dhanavad. Dhanavad. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Vedi Mikra Maharaj. It's nice. Srimad Bhagavatam is the incarnation of Krishna in literary form. And Nectar of Devotion is the incarnation of Srimati Radharani in literary form. Chaitanya Charitamrita is the incarnation of Lord Chaitanya in literary form. Non different. We have a question from Dalitangi Radha Mataji. Mataji, would you like to go ahead, please? Mataji, we cannot hear you, Mataji. Oh, sorry. Lalitangi Mataji, are you able to hear me now? Yeah, are you able to hear me? Yes, we are able to hear you. Yeah. You may go ahead with your question. Mr. Maharaj, uh, such a beautiful class, uh, so much needed uh, for me, especially now. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's so nice to read that line that... Uh, Prabhupada is telling that if possible, do it 24 hours a day. And I mean, we are not even doing a, a 10 percentage of it also. And you rightly said that because we are not hearing and chanting enough, uh, 
you know the problems we have so many problems because of that that's very true maharaj so my question is um, uh, you know <clears throat> practically when we put uh, when we want to read for ourselves in a contemplative way trying to read the mind puts so many things oh you have this service to do you have that to do and this and that and as you say the activity uh, and the deadlines they get predominance and this thing goes <laughs> back and when it comes to listening or reading that's the problem uh, i face so uh, can you tell me how to overcome this uh, you know trick of laziness or apathy yeah, or towards it's a very, reading very simple and very easy answer <laughs> schedule it <laughs> Keep it as part of your regular schedule for a particular time of the day, because you can also expand on that. And that, that will automatically happen as the taste grows. But have a particular time, but well, and this is what I'm supposed to do at this time, and there's no other activities that are going to interfere with that. We have a time that we regularly take prashadam. We have a time when we regularly take rest. So we are in order for us to function on the spiritual platform, regulation keeps the mind from interfering and diverting our attention away. So that's important. Schedule it. And, you know, you'll see, even if you want to expand the schedule by adding to it, that's fine. But have that time of the day where you don't change it. Mm -hmm. So you might have to you might have to change the time of the day until you get it right where you want it, and you know this is what you'll do at this time. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, I find that's that's the only way we're going to be able to do it regularly. Is to schedule it. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll do that, Maharaj, and uh, tell you how it went. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay. <laughs> Thank, you, Maharaj. Thank you very much for my class and also eye opening. And uh, thank you for giving us the solution also. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you for another just beautiful, beautiful class. All of the points you made about, um, you know, delving, when we delve into devotional service, that all of our material problems are gone. Not that they magically disappear, but, you know, we don't... Um, we have a completely different perspective on them. I, I love the points and I've experienced so many times the point about, um, you know, every time we read, it changes. The verses change, what we get from them change. Sometimes I notice even the purport seems to change and they're always even more nectarian and I appreciate that. Um, I'm also so grateful for what you said about Nectar of Devotion being the incarnation of a Srimati Radharani. I did not know that, but it makes so much sense because it's such a Nectarian text. And yes, it's all about um, service. So I'm so grateful yeah. for that comment. Yeah, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati coined that statement. Uh, and when we understand that nectar devotion is the handbook for the execution of devotional service. Mm -hmm. And so Radharani is, she's Bhakti Devi. She's devotional service, pure devotional service personified. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, that is the comparison made by Bhakti Siddhanta. Mm -hmm. Saraswati. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Maharaj. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna.
हरे कृष्ण महाराज अनंत कोटि दंडवत प्रणाम शिल प्रभुपात शिल गुरुदेव श्री श्री राधा गोपीनाथ की जय महाराज समटाइम्स देर इज अ गोपीनाथ फाउंटेन इज देर सो देर इज अ Uh, that uh, we should not proud about the uh, whatever seva is given by Shrimati Shishi Ratha Rani Bhakti Devi Shrimati Shishi Tulsi Maran that uh, uh, reading or book distribution or uh, cooking prasadam or book uh, or uh, collecting uh, fund for a uh, uh, Gopinath Lotus Feet every seva is given by the mercy of Srimati Sisi Radha Rani for preaching Prabh Maharaj so uh, we should not deviated and we should just saw Srimati Sisi Radha Rani because all seva given by her Maharaj thank you Maharaj Bhakti Devi Tulsi Maharani Sisi Tulsi Maharani ki jai Bhakti Devi Sisi Radha Rani ki jai Thank you, Maharaj, for your all association and specially reading, Maharaj. I am very big to read this Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavatam uh, hardly sit fifteen hours in a one 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 corner, Maharaj. I will improve myself. Sit in one corner at least start thirty minutes to read, and I am not digesting whatever I hear. So I I try my best to digest and follow in day to day life, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj, and our HG Lalita Angi Gopi, HG Preeti Vilasani, or Bhakti Sangha teachers are spiritual bomb, Maharaj. They are chalti firti library. Means they are their reading is so much, Maharaj, that uh, that whenever we hear that lecture, it's work, Maharaj. We uh, we understand that where we are in a bhakti. Thank you, Maharaj. Anant Koti Dhanwar Pranam to your every Friday association, Maharaj. Not only me, my Prabhu, my two daughters are attentively attending your class. Ananta Koti Dhanvat Pranam, Shila Prabhupada, Shila Guru Dev Ki Jai. Now they also engage in Sisi Jagannath cooking seva, Maharaj. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. It is after 22 years, uh, it's happened. So I'm so happy <laughs> that yes, it is work. Hare Krishna, I'm happy you're happy. <laughs> Um, I, um, I have a 10 point listing of the 10 things that you can practice or use. That's a better word to use in, in set, setting yourself in a routine for reading. It's on a, a it's on a file. I'd be happy to send it to one devotee on the conference here, on your group here, who, who maybe can make it available to everyone who wants it. So if you send me or give me an email address right after we conclude here, I'll send you that file. It's 10 things that you can follow which will assist you in the process of reading, especially Srimad Bhagavatam. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavat Pranam Maharaj. Thank you so much for a wonderful class and uh, for stressing on the importance of reading and chanting and how the Srimad Bhagavatam is not different from the Lord himself. Uh, this was my question for you, and I think you have already answered it now. My question for you was, Maharaj, can you hear me? Yes, good. Okay. Okay. My, my question was, uh, reading means I just read through the translation and the purport, and then I go to the next verse. That, that is, I feel like I, I'm missing out on actually what it is, like what you were saying. Srila Prabhupada said, reading one verse would take a month so uh, what is the right mood for reading and how to read, read and, and try to read and try to understand and if you don't understand go back over it and read it again think about what you're reading if you get some idea write it down on a piece of paper but the, 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 the point is to contemplate which leads to to understanding, read and then think about it. And then that helps to understand when you understand then you can understand 
a little bit how to apply it. Yes, Maharaj. Can you please share the 10 points with Shama Gauri Mataji, uh, if you have her email address? I, I'd have to do it on computer. I can't do it through my phone. But um, if you have an, an email address that somebody can, uh, I can do it with Shama Gauri's email address, I think. Yes. But I'm, yes. Not, I'm not sure if I have it. I know I have her husband's email address. Yeah. Um. I will I will send you the test email and you just reply to it, Maharaj. You will send me what? The test email link just uh, saying. Okay. You have my email address? Uh, yes, Maharaj. Okay. Do that right away and then I can do it right at the end of the program. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. And then somebody will have to be in charge and then everyone can write to that person maybe you and then you can send it out to the other devotees oh, wow. it's pretty good it's 10 simple points but it's real, very helpful yes Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj please accept my humble obeisance this all goes to Shri Prabhupada and all goes to your holiness um, thank you such uh, thank you for such a wonderful class Guru Maharaj uh, may I request you to send me the uh, file to Guru Maharaj? Yes, I, I can do so that. So that I can circulate it in our God family. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Okay. All right. Uh, maybe we uh, can con conclude here unless there's another question. Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances or glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to your holiness. Thank you, Guru Maharaj, for this truly wonderful class, reminding us of the essentials of bhakti. This is so important for us. <laughs> I, I really feel this class was really for me, you know, to get something into my head. Um, my question is, it's very important to schedule a time, and I understand now the importance of making an attempt to do that. I also understand completely when you say, Guru Maharaj, we have so many problems and we are so caught up in the problems, but our real problem is we are not doing what we do, which is hearing and chanting and reading properly. Um, I heard a very, maybe a few years ago, a devotee saying, if you have any problems, just go and open the Bhagavad Gita and start reading and the answer will be there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that works. So when we have problems, should we just, just go and grab the Bhagavad Gita and just open wherever and just start reading it? And Yeah, but if you read it regularly, you won't have so many problems. <laughs> <laughs> but that's also, it says that it, usually not so much a problem, but if you have a question or something you need to understand. You can just open and read and then you'll get the answer. This is a spiritual process. It's not a material process. That means your desires are fulfilled through the through your desire to become Krishna conscious. Mm. Mm. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Hey, Krishna, Jai Ho. In this dense darkness of Kali, you are the light shining for us to simply walk on that path. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Bo. Thank you. It's all Srila Prabhupada's mercy. That's all. If there are no further questions, we can end the call here. Oh, uh, there is Vrindanath. Um, Vrindan Prabhuji, if you would like to go ahead with your question, please. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, uh, Guru Maharaj, my question is, you mentioned about this uh, uh, meditating, like reading this uh, one verse for 30 days as per Prabhupada in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, my like understanding just wanted to clarify is more uh, 
because when we read shrimad bhagavatam like every verse it's very difficult to hold just on one verse because it's so nectar it like looks like let's read next one uh, so is this more related to meditating on that verse and really trying to self realize that okay what does this mean trying to bring that well, it practice means, it really it really means that what's you, what's in front of you you can't really understand unless you continually go into it more and more and more and that was illustrated by bhakti siddhanta saraswati in dhaka when he was speaking on the first verse janma yasya yataha uh the first verse in shrimad bhagavatam first canto first chapter he spoke on it for uh, for three months the same verse uh and there was no purport so it was just a verse <laughs> and he created his own purports by his, through his like, explanations and in those three months it's not that he simply repeated himself every day he was always adding more and more points so you know this is the was it nasta no what is it uh what is that verse um one can continually hear and chant the glories of the lord and get newer and newer understandings from the same uh what is it 10th uh, chapter in bhagavad gita verse number 9 what is 109 first line slips my mind right now uh, machita matkata pranam bodiyantas parasparam katiyantas chimam dityam tu shanti cha romanti cha yeah now that verse says here the thoughts of my pure devotees dwell in me their lives are surrendered to me and they derive great satisfaction and bliss from enlightening one another and conversing with them propad expands on that point and you know this is the characteristic of the devotees is hearing and chanting the glories of the lord more and more again the devotees of the are 24 hours daily engaged in glorifying the qualities and past of their hearts or so yeah so you might say well i'm not a pure devotee but in essence you are a pure devotee but you haven't reached that stage all souls are pure there is no impure souls <laughs> and the body somehow or other uh, is the impure element of our existence the soul is always pure but when the soul identifies with the body it takes on this wrong mentality and then it becomes uh different but in its essence it's pure so hearing and chanting the glories of the lord he opens up more and more of the knowledge that is in front of us So if you want to do that that's good because if you do that with one verse and you study that one verse over and over again then you can give classes on that one verse continuously and you can give seminars on it you could give <laughs> you know you can continue to discuss it from many many different angles of vision and to support that we have the commentaries of the of the acharyas on all of the verses of shrimad bhagavatam so there's an ocean of knowledge in each one each particular verse because mm-hmm. it's not static it's dynamic dynamic means it expands itself both in our repetition of contact and by our purity of development so as we purify ourselves we also realize more and as we realize more we uh, we also become purified so it's like both are supporting each other the purification and the realizations are happening simultaneously and that realization is unlimited knowledge is coming from one particular verse and that's probably a statement over and over again that's also the statement of shila bhakti siddhanta saraswati
Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. Hare yeah. Krishna. It's unlimited. <laughs> yes, Guru Maharaj. Hare okay, Krishna. so we'll end here. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll look forward to our next meeting. <laughs> Thank you very much, Maharaj. Thank you very much again for your association. Thanks for your kind, wonderful Nectarian class. Hari Thank, you. Thank you, Tiffany from Pennsylvania. Lalita and Dina Bandu from somewhere Thank in the United you. States of America. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna.